I'm live and uh, could anyone in the chat please confirm that you're able not only to see me but also hear me. I also have uh, one browser open to see myself. And I think everything should be working. Yeah, I can see myself and I think I can hear myself. So welcome everyone to another online chess class. Let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Kastonian. Uh, for the last eight years, I'm working as a chess coach online. Today, hopefully, I'm going to show you some very interesting mating patterns that are very important. I try to select uh, the puzzles very wisely and only include those that are either very fun or the ones that have very good practical purposes. It means that they're happening in a lot of the games uh, all over the world. At first, when I'm going to introduce you to a new pattern, perhaps I'm going to give you the very easiest examples, just to understand what that pattern is about. And uh, then gradually we're going to increase the level and make the puzzles harder and harder. And once I'm going to introduce you to most of the patterns that I want to show you today, we'll cover, at, uh, we'll cover some of the famous games, how grandmasters were able to beat each other with these patterns. And at the very, very end, I even hope you to show you really, really uh, hard ones, which means that they're going to be perhaps the most interesting ones. So uh, as always, guys, I expect you to be very active. Uh, so far, uh, you're, we're a wonderful team together with you. And uh, let's have a lot of fun today as well. Uh, yes, I will be reading Chess24 chat. Uh, and I'm going to also read YouTube chat. Uh, I can see that I think, every, can anyone confirm that you can hear me very well? Um, I would be very pleased to know that you guys can hear me and uh, the audio, audio quality is, uh, is good. So I can see that people are gathering as always. Uh, I expect the audience, yes, they're confirming that they can hear me uh, very nice. And uh, then, uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to the first pattern. So, uh, the, the, the first time I introduce you to a new pattern is going to be mate in one. Um, perhaps I should also mention what a pattern is in chess. What does it mean? You can always hear people saying, checkmate pattern, tactical pattern. I like to describe it as this. The pattern is placement of the pieces that allow a tactic to be possible. So if it's a checkmate pattern, then it means placement of the pieces that allow the checkmate to be possible. So in this position, we have the so-called, uh, if I pronounce it, of course, well, Anastasia mate. And thank you for everyone for confirming the audio and video. So in this one, it is why to play checkmate in one move. And this checkmate is called Anastasia mate. So... How do we mate, guys? I'm sure that most of you have seen this, but remember that uh, there are beginners that are watching that stream and I want to make sure that they also have the time um, to look around of how white can checkmate uh, the black king over here. Um, I will be always uh, reading the Chess24 chat as well as YouTube chat, so uh, I promise I will read most of the comments there and... Uh, uh, there are already suggestions in the chat that suggest the right move. Um, congratulations to Arkham and Matthews. Uh, they're both right. I think that there are, th th there are many checkmate patterns that are named similarly. Um, yes, you're, and you all are allowed to spoil moves in the chat. Uh, don't worry, I will make sure that uh, the beginners have also some time uh, to, um, to think about the move. So even if you give your answer very quickly, I will still wait uh, a minute or two and try to explain the position a bit. And then I will come back to your comment. So most people are right over here. And uh, it's a combination of a rook and knight. Uh, please notice how knight perfectly execute uh, the restriction purposes and uh, covers the g8 and g6 square. And so the after... Rook coming to h5, we have a, a beautiful mate that's called Anastasia mate, if that's the way to pronounce it. So Rook is coming to h5, and the king cannot escape the, the, the threat. 
there is a check by the rook and as we mentioned the g8 and g6 squares are covered by the rook so what is the point of knowing all of these patterns is that when you have similar position on the, in your games when say it's mate in one mate in two mate in three in your own games it's not time to think already it's time to act and so when you solve around 500 or 1000 puzzles in your life, you can see those mates in thousands of similar positions. And then when you have a mate in two, it's like bam, bam, you checkmate your opponent and you get a full point. Uh, so I want to take it a bit step further and uh, give similar mating pattern now where it's mate in two. So guys, uh, help me, please. There are, there are some people who have never seen this position in their lives. Uh, I'm very glad that I'm showing something new. Uh, I didn't expect that this, this would be new to, to some of the player because I believe that this is one of the most common mating pattern. So I'm very glad that I'm able to, to show this one to you because I feel like it's very, very important to know. So what about this one? Um, why to play and win again? And this time we have a mate in two. Oh, yeah, I, I made a mistake. The person was saying that they have never had this position in their games, but they have seen it. Yeah, that's what I expected, actually. So uh, in this position, chat is right. Uh, we can sacrifice our queen on h7 square. And remember, we can sack the queen if we achieve a checkmate because king safety is more important than material in this game. And so the only way we can sack the queen and perhaps be happy is if we achieve a checkmate. So we force the previous position by queen takes, a, takes h7 and the king must take. And after that, we have this rook to h5. Right. So now uh, let's take one step even uh, further away. And uh, what about this position? It's uh, this time mate in three. Four sequence of moves, uh, mate in three. Don't worry, those who find these too easy, um, I will give you a lot of hard ones uh, as well today. Believe me, at the very end, they will be very tough ones. Even if you're uh, very good at chess, even if you're a title player, I believe there will be some, uh, some that will uh, be hard for you. Yes, someone is saying that uh, these checkmates are too easy, uh, but remember that uh, this stream is for beginner level, but however, I will also try to gradually increase the level, and some of the puzzles are going to be very hard. Uh, the way I like to teach in chess is that at first, I give very, very easy puzzles, and I gradually uh, make them harder and harder and harder. So there is already someone in the chat that saw the answer. It's um, knight to e7 which forces the king to the h8 squared. There are no alternatives. And after queen takes h7 and king takes h7, we have the same mate with rook to h5. Um, one more uh, with Anastasia mate with the curl co colors reverse, perhaps. We have to find number four. One number four, here it is. And let me flip the board. And this position is black to play. So black to play and achieve a mate with the force and sequence of moves. Right, and the only thing that changes, we reverse the colors, it's exactly the same mating pattern. And as you see, once you see it, it mate in one, even if it takes some steps uh, away from it, if it's mate in two or three or four, uh, you know what position you're aiming for, right? And so here, Again, knight e2 forces the king to h1, and then we can sack on h2, the queen, and this rook goes to h6. And again, similar pattern, rook knight is taking away uh, these squares, and the rook is uh, checking there on the left side of the board. Okay, let me introduce it to a new pattern. Um, again, as you guys know, I like to show it from the very basic level at first, and then gradually we're gonna build on it. So, the next mate is called the uh, Arabian mate. It is this position. Let me flip the board. And it's just white to play and, and mate. So mate in one. Looks simple. And I expect you guys to, to find it relatively quickly. So 
So in this position, uh, there are two ways where the rook can end up in order to checkmate. One would be on h7, which is the legal move. However, if the rook went to g8, that would also be made. So if the opponent's king is in the corner, we don't need any extra pieces like the pawn supporting that. Um, it's enough with the knight and rook to give this, this mate uh, in the corner. Now, as you will see later, we're also going to learn the so-called hooks mate that looks very similar. When the king is, say, um, a bit more in the, in the centralized squares, centralized means still on the edge of the board, but c8, d8, e8, or f8, uh, then we will need a pawn supporting that. But uh, if the king is on the edge, uh, rook h7, or if the rook went to g8, would be enough to, uh, to mate. So let's do uh, one puzzle on this one. And again, I, I gradually increase the level and this one will already be tougher for you guys. So this one is uh, wide to play and a forcing checkmate uh, can be achieved. So wide to play and already a bit tougher one. So I'm, I'm glad that this time uh, the chat is taking their time. Um, perhaps this one is a bit harder. However, please remember um, what we saw a position ago. And at the very end, you want to reach someone similar. King on the edge, a knight rook cooperating to, to, to checkmate. Um, I would be pleased if, um, dear commentators, if you would write me a full line. When you say the first move, I don't know if you see the whole line, the whole combination, right? And uh, there are there are many uh, many players that are suggesting the right move, uh, and uh, most of you are absolutely right about the combination. Uh, we're also going to end up in a similar position where, yes, you're right. So. We're going to end up in a similar position where we're going to force the opponent's king to the edge. So knight f6 is the first move. And a black spawn cannot take, as we learned in the previous streams, because of the, the pin that is also called absolute. Uh, the, the pawn cannot take the knight because the, the king would be exposed to the check. That forces the king to h8. And then we have a beautiful combination of rook takes h6, which leaves black with only one move. Pawn takes h6. And then we have a similar mate that we saw in the previous position with rook to uh, g8. So here knight is covering both of these squares and uh, we have a mate. What you can already start feeling that when it's about to checkmate, uh, we consider very, very aggressive moves that are checks. And uh, sometimes, uh, actually a lot of the times, we, uh, we have to sacrifice pieces because king safety is far more important uh, than the material uh, in the game of chess. So now we have um, another similar pattern. Uh, this one is uh, white to play. And all of those of you who like uh, more challenging ones, again, this one is a bit harder than the previous one. As we will go to the second part uh, of the stream, we will be able to, uh, to solve even a more challenging one than this one. So white to play and achieve a force and sequence of moves um, to checkmate the opponent's king. Also, at the end, it's going to be uh, the so-called Arabian mate. So king is going to be perhaps somewhere close to the edge, and knight and rook are going to go uh, get the lethal blow and checkmate. So I'm glad that Chad is taking their time because the positions are getting a bit harder and uh, I'm going to try to do this with every pattern we learned today. Hmm. So how do we find the solution here? Well, let's make together a list of candidate moves. So I feel like the most forcing moves are the ones that we have to consider first and I'm going to give you my own personal list of candidate moves. These are the moves that I think are worth of consideration. I don't know if they are winning or not, but those are the moves that I want to consider. So it's queen h8, check, queen f7, sack, knight to g6, uh, check, 
and perhaps like for a second i could consider knight f6 like four moves and i start looking at them one by one uh, from starting from the one that i find the most compelling and to me personally i would consider queen h8 first however after knight is king to e7 i'm struggling to find a continuation so i say queen h8 king e7 winning and then as people are pointing out in the chat the second move that i would try to consider would be queen f7 yes a queen sacrifice so i don't judge the book by its cover i don't judge the move by the first impression so after queen f7 i'm forcing him to take with the rook because my knight is also watching over it after queen f7 and rook f7 and we should do this all in our minds right but i'm showing this to uh, those who, um, who are a bit more beginners then i have two moves that i would consider so one would be knight g6 also a very forcing move and still rook h8 so rook h8 would allow the black's king to escape to e7 and i cannot checkmate the king there so it's very important here to land this check on g6 with the knight then we're covering both f8 and e7 squares and so we're forcing the king to the right side and since the king is on the edge g8 or h h8 square we can give a mate with the rook on h8 so um mainly because the rook is on f7 of course and king is wondering why are you here i would love to go to f7 otherwise i'm checkmated and this is another uh, version of uh, of arabian mate it wasn't a mate and one rook was covering f7 yeah someone pointed out yeah. okay so that's the one so this is Arabian mate and uh, very important. Uh, there are millions of, uh, of, of games with that happening all, uh, online uh, very, very often. So let me introduce you to another pattern and it, it's gonna be a little bit similar. It, it, it's called the hooks checkmate. So again, so starting from very, very simple one and gradually uh, I will increase the level of it. So as you can see, the difference is that the king is not on the edge of the board. It's kind of on the edge but it's not in the corner so the king is on e7 and we can land the rook on e8 to give a checkmate so for this already we needed the pawn of ours uh, to defend the knight and cover the d6 square so the rook is guarded by the knight and it makes it perfect conditions for white to, to achieve this checkmate as you if you look around the black's king we cannot uh, we cannot achieve um any square we we cannot move anywhere because all the squares are taken away and now let's make some uh, a bit harder puzzles uh, related to this pattern uh, number nine i have to not lose track of the numbers number nine is the next one and here it is so guys an exercise for you uh, why to play and achieve a checkmate So we already have um, a couple of suggestions in the chat. I will also guide you how to think about it. Uh, remember the previous position that I showed. And you want to enter something very, very similar by force. So you want to force that mate and one that we had before. It might not be completely the same. It could be on the right side of the board, on the left, on the back, on the top. But it has to be something similar. And that's what, what patterns means. And so people are suggesting rook g7 and you're absolutely right so in this position we can place our rook on g7 yes sacrificing rook anything for mate yeah guys and after bishop g7 we have rook takes g7 now rook g6 still there seems to be a defense but rook g6 covers it all and so the only pieces that say are needed in this would be the rook on g6 the knight on h4 and the pawn on 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 g3 for now and of course uh, so that uh, say the, the h5 pawn would surround the, the black king and not allow it to go there right and we have same similar pattern uh, again not exactly the same position but we call it still the hooks checkmate and now one more that i think it's classical like the beatles all have heard of the beatles all have heard uh, or have seen i should say uh, this pattern so if you're an intermediate chess player and i give you this position i would expect you to solve this bam like in a second so it's not time to think it's time to act which means 
all of you are should benefit from this one because it's a must known it's such a common idea and common mating pattern that i absolutely have to show it to you so why to play and force a checkmate in a couple of moves everyone uh, who is enjoying the stream i would appreciate it a lot if you gave a like on this video that means that uh what I'm doing matters, uh, and uh, you are enjoying the, 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 the lesson. Thank you very much. So th there are already um, a lot of suggestions. And so if I give this position to, <clears throat> to a student, um, what I expect uh, him to consider first. Thank you, uh, thank you, Iron Man, for such a huge compliment. I, I appreciate that a lot. Uh, that's why I do this, right? Thank you very much for all the compliments. So in this position, if I give this position to my student uh, and he tries to make a list of candidate moves, again, moves that he thinks are worth of consideration not necessarily the best moves but moves that are worth of looking at evaluating the absolute first move he needs to look at is queen c8 because it is the most forcing move right and blast king is a bit boxed in you can imagine queen takes c8 king takes c8 and after rook e8 it's already started getting shaky you might not see the mate immediately but there are already many squares around the blast king that are taken uh, taken away so if uh if we take on c8 and king takes c8 and rook to e8 doesn't it look already familiar with what we saw in the previous two so if there are squares be there is a knight first of all on c6 and the pawn guarding it and the rook that is getting behind the king because the king could go only to b7 and d7 right so these two squares so we're when we're learning the patterns first mate in one and then it doesn't matter mate in two three four five we're trying to force that pattern uh with the the previous moves so here we sack the queen king takes rook goes and already it should sound uh or look uh, a bit familiar because that's what we saw in the previous puzzle right rook b8 same checkmate uh with a pawn as i always say have to be controlling the knight and there are there are a lot of times also troops that are uh, getting in the king's way also if you may ask what happens if king to d7 um, then we have a similar similar mate with d8 right so that's that's the pattern okay next one um for the next one i'm going to teach you the pillsbury's mate also very important and then i'm going to give you one but a very hard puzzle so Pillsbury mate at this one and how does it look well black king is surrounded by a couple of its troops uh, the bishop is like a sniper shooting all the squares around the, the king and so we could just go rook to g1 and rook g1 takes over the g file bishop is taking away the that diagonal and we have a mate for that to happen a lot of the times a piece has to be on a fate um, to not allow the king to move over there and now i'm going to give you a very um, i would say hard relative to the previous puzzles in, in, in this one i think it should be number if i'm right number 12 number 12 where it's hanging um, it's hiding here so this one is already i can uh, give you guys a hint that it's a mate in between three and five moves all right so it's hard one and uh, i'm gonna guide those of you who find it hard to visualize all that but i want to give as well a chance to those who want to do it from from further away right uh this is not a tournament uh dear dear spectators we're having a lesson uh on the most common checkmating pattern so i'm teaching you uh, the very basic patterns and then trying to make the puzzles harder and harder uh, related to that pattern and during the second part of the lesson i will show you beautiful mates that happen in real games uh, by played by the world champion and grandmaster and and those others so it's an online lesson that is aimed at people uh, that are beginners but i think that anyone be between um a thousand and eighteen hundred can benefit from that at a lot as well i would say fifteen hundred would be ideal level
yeah mangrover in your line um uh, if rook back i have uh, f6 i have pawn to f6 all right so I, i'm giving you a chance that uh, this one takes uh takes quite a few moves and uh, uh that's why i'm only gonna give you one uh, as an advance from the pillsbury's mating pattern that's how it's called and uh yeah, a lot of the people uh, are giving this line. And now I think it's time for me to, um, to try and help you uh, make it work. In this position, if I gave uh, this to my students, what would I expect them to think about? What would their candidate, a list of candidate moves look like? I think that the most forcing move, and if we have a feeling that we're going after the mate, we have to look at queen takes g7. Yes, sacrificing a queen. So queen takes g7, knight takes g7, rook takes g7, note how the bishop from b2 is guarding the rook, and then king to h8. I agree that it looks really, really bad for black. Right? But where is the mate? And so people are thinking about moves like rook somewhere here, like rook g1. However, then we're missing a couple of things. A, f6, blocking the check. And we sack the queen, guys, remember, right? And two, knight takes b2. So knight takes b2 and it doesn't work. Here is the secret so that these things wouldn't happen again. When you're on the, on the very first move, you're making the list of candidate moves. A lot of the times, at least if, if you're familiar with the, with the framework of how we have to think in the game of chess. But on move 2 or 3, we'll forget that. So now in this position, what you have to do is again create a list of candidate moves. So if I was to think about moves that I'm, I think that are worth of considering here would be probably rook g8. Oh, let me make it red, right? Rook g8, rook takes h7, rook takes f7, and maybe even e5 so that the bishop would aim at that square. And then if you just consider one move for too long, like let's say it's rook h7, you can dedicate five minutes and it's going to be unclear. But sometimes if you just say, I'm going to dedicate now 20 seconds on each candidate move. If the move is right, you can see it immediately. And I think that if you were to consider rook to g8, you will notice that it's going to be a mate on the next move. Because king must take. Remember, it's a double check. So rook cannot take. And after the king takes, we have rook g1 and it's mate. Well, let's not count guys that they can play queen g5 and we play rook g5. Yeah, that's the mating pattern. So that's the idea, that if you're trying to make some move work for five minutes, it's just not time efficient. So make a list of candidate moves, not only on the first move, but second, third, fourth, right? And sometimes if you just consider the right move, you will see it's the right one in very, very quickly. Hope that makes sense, guys, huh? Yeah, rook g8, okay. All righty, right, let's go for the... For the next pattern and everyone who is just joining uh i have to say i would appreciate if you gave a like on the video that means that what i do um makes sense to all of you and you're enjoying the lesson um next one now i would like to show you some unusual mates so these were very common mating patterns and now let's take a look at unusual ones where is unusual ones? Unusual ones. Let me find them. They're, they're hiding from us. But they cannot hide for long. Maybe I should look at the number. It's going to be number. Here it goes. So this one is uh, white supply. And white in this position can checkmate in two moves. This one maybe is not the weirdest one, but uh, it's more rare than the others. So someone is asking, what are the so-called candidate moves? And here is my take on this one. Candidate list of candidate moves is list of moves that are worth of considering. They're not necessarily the best moves you don't know, but those are moves that to your eye look worth of considering. So for example, if I was to make a list of candidate moves in this position, I would go for moves like say, I'm looking for mate. So it would be something like knight d5 maybe, knight g6, 
queen h7, knight f5, those options. So I think that, say, these four moves, personally to me, are the ones that I want to consider. And it might differ from person to person. The biggest problem that amateurs make is uh, that they only consider one move. So they get to a position and they see a compelling move and they only focus on that. And for the rest of the time, like three, four, five minutes, they're trying to make it work. Whereas instead, what you should be doing is make a list of candid moves. We human beings, we're better at comparing the moves. So instead of just, say, focusing on something like knight g6 here and only working with that, compare it with queen h7 followed by knight g6. So that what's the difference between playing queen h7 and knight, then knight g6 or knight g6 immediately? That's called the candidate moves. It was introduced by a grandmaster by the name of Kotov, I think in the 70s, and uh, many, many coaches around the world are using that. So there are many... Uh, there are many people that are already suggesting the right move here. And if the knight would land on g6 safely, it would be a mate. If you look just at the black's king squares and the, uh, the squares around it, black's king cannot go anywhere, right? There are no squares that we could go to, but they could take the knight. And so that's where the list of candid moves help. We upgrade that idea and we remove the defender by force. So now if say king f8, of course, we have queen f7, um, a child's type of mating pattern that you all must know probably so after queen h7 they wrap the, the, the queen and then we have knight g6 and you can look around and you will notice that white's king is uh, black's king is mated yes and someone is saying that these are exhausting exercise if you do a lot of them yes i think that's why chess might be called a sport after all right that it's not as easy as some might think and this one is called rainbow checkmate also quite rare one it's a mate in two can anybody tell me what's the mate in two here and again we're slowly gonna get to the harder ones so someone is asking a very interesting question they're saying that once the theme is clear uh, the, the 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 mating pattern that they know uh, they can solve similar exercises that are related to the pattern very quickly but once they're given a weird puzzle a mating pattern that they have never seen before it's uh, very very hard uh, for them to find the answer and my answer is that you are normal and it's the same for everyone right so if i work with kids that i saw that solve thousands of mating patterns yes i have kids that so have solved already thousands and thousands of checkmating patterns and I give them something that is related to a common pattern they will see it like that bam 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 but then if I give them a weird one that is more unique one it will take minutes them and it's the same for everyone so I as a chess coach I try to first uh, give you the most important patterns means that they happen the most of the time and then perhaps uh, we can get to the weird ones but first of course we got to understand and, and know those that are the most um, occurring the, the, the most often. So here you're absolutely right. There is a very beautiful mate, uh, bishop d3, uh, king goes to d2, and then bishop e3. So it, ju it just looks beautiful, right? Not hard, but um, beautiful combination. And it's called rainbow, I guess, because of the placement of the bishops, the dark squares and, uh, and the light squares. So soon we're going to get to um, the famous games where one side uh, was able to mate an opponent. But let me show you another one that is very, very important. It's white to play and checkmate. And there will be a couple of ways, but uh, let's just see if you can find uh, any way to, to checkmate the opponent very, very soon. So two or three or four moves. You are very active today. It's a pleasure working with you guys, uh, with such an active audience. I, as a chess coach, uh, uh, I'm delighted to be working with such an active audience. So why to play? And uh, while some of you might uh, be thinking uh, and taking your time, I will also make a list of candidate moves here. And 
we're pretty much on knight xg7 all in right that's absolutely the first move uh, that we want to consider that seems to be attacking the king directly it forces the king to go to d8 and for now i think we just have to work with this one as we don't have any other move that directly attacks the king it's the most forcing move and uh, we don't have any other move that is uh, attacking the king with a similar uh, force and, and, and threat so what to do there right so we have uh, knight takes g7 that forces the opponent's king get to d8 and now here comes the question what to do next so if i scroll to the chat there are people that solve this one um if you look at the position you can notice that there will be a mate if the bishop could safely be on e7 so one of the mating patterns perhaps the problem is that knight can't take how can we force the knight to leave the g8 square where well if we go for mate we don't care about sacking material and that's where queen f6 comes and uh, yes we're sacrificing our queen uh, this is either a checkmate or, or or black takes because bishop e7 knight e7 leads to queen takes e7 so knight must take and bishop e7 is a mate congratulations to to all of you who who solved this one that was really really uh tougher one i think queen sack and congratulations there are many people in the chat that uh that solved this one really really beautiful one to me as well guys yeah remember that when i prepare for the lesson i try to pick either very important ones even if they are not beautiful ones but if they're important i, I pick those one for you and then also something that would uh, show a pleasuring solution right beautiful so this one is black to play i i would spoil if i if i told you how many moves does it take to mate but uh, if black doesn't checkmate here black is lost because black is a lot of down in in, in material so guys i need your help dear audience where is the mate uh if you notice if you will calculate all the lines the most annoying square where constantly the white king will go is going to be to f3 try to overcome that somehow So black to play and uh, and check me to white's king. Um, I'm also welcoming any kind of questions related to chess. Uh, if if you want to take the opportunity and ask me anything related to chess, uh, please do. Uh, I might not answer all, but the ones that I will um, I will be able to, then I will. So there are already suggestions in the chat. Congratulations to Arun. Uh, Sadanala, sorry if I pronounce it wrong, but uh, that's a username and that's the one that solved the puzzle correctly. And um, if we choose anything else, king could go to f3, right? So that's the, say, the, the go-to move for the white's king in most of the lines. And the only way we can actually take it away is with knight e5. So, yes, we take away f3 square for now, but you might be wondering, well, can't the white pawn just take it, right? Because f takes e5 could happen. But notice that our rook is still covering the f3 square. Yeah. And now, any, any check will do the mate. So, the pawn on e7, which will always say it's not good pawn, right? In the corner. Now, is the prince, right? Is the, the hero of, of the black's camp and gives the lethal blow. So knight e5 and h5. Congratulations again to those that solved it. I don't think this was very easy. Now number 20. There are many ways to checkmate here. I know, I know. But I just have to show this one to you. I just have to show this one to you. It's uh, a checkmate with bishop and knight. And whoever can uh, give us a good, uh, one of the good solutions will do. This one perhaps is easy, but if I don't show this on my stream, I will. I, I cannot sleep at night. I will know that I missed something. Someone asks, how to get better at in chess? Right, that's a very good question. And there are millions of books that are written on this. It's like asking how to be happy in life for example, or how to make money, right? So how to be get better at chess? 
well you have to learn right and i think that learning efficiently is the best way so um if you can afford hiring a chess coach will make it very efficiently if you cannot afford a chess coach tactics is a go-to thing plus reading the books by uh that are have the reputation of um of being very very good ones so learning with a coach doing puzzles reading books game analysis uh playing long time control games these are the things that everyone who has ever improved at chess have done maybe with the exception of although i think that uh, all of those fall under that category all of them will help you tremendously so there are many ways to checkmate and i can see that uh, there are many uh, there are many ways to checkmate here and you're absolutely right uh, let me show you one for example it would be knight to f6 and the point of this is bring the knight to e2 so that after king g1 we would cover this square so say king b8 check king goes to the corner and that's how one of the positions of how the mate with checkmate checkmate with bishop and knight could look like for example an alternative could be also something like knight b4 and also king here check and the point is just to give uh, that check at the very end so that we would reach this position okay so now let's get to more fun ones uh, again this one just an important one i feel and this to me was really really beautiful one. i was so happy when i come across this puzzle when i was preparing it was a real grandmaster game it's black to play and checkmate by force all right so if we make a list of candidate moves again queen f2 probably uh one uh knight f2 two and bishop g4 three but as you know uh we start looking at the most forcing ones first so i can tell you that i need you to work on queen f2 very beautiful one so someone is asking um they have 1800 a rating uh, on leeches how good are they right so i don't believe in good bad or bad with most things not all things but uh especially when it comes to chess like good move bad move it depends on who are we comparing to right so if someone doesn't play chess at all uh rating of 1000 is just insane to them they're seeing that they're not blundering in one move they're achieving all of those combinations they're pinning they control the center and they just cannot beat them right now if we compare 1000 to 1500 then 1500 is very good right and and, and that's like that so like grandmaster might be bad to world champion perhaps as a player compared right to 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 some extent uh However, uh, I think that 1800 means that you have spent a lot of time on chess and uh, it's a rating that everyone should be respecting. So, So in, I think that uh, some of you already found a solution. It's um, it's a beautiful maiden form, and uh, here we we have queen f2 as we said, and then the king goes here, and that's a part where it gets tricky. So here even I would choose between probably if I look at it instantly, I would see a couple of moves, and I would come consider bishop to g4 maybe even first with the idea of somehow bringing the bishop there at some point however the move here that i would also instantly consider is trying to get the so-called smother made with queen g1 so we can go queen g1 and the opponent would have to take the rook right and now knight f2 right and it seems like the king is getting out and now the piece that did not participate in the attack uh, of this at all uh goes and gives the lethal blow so it's a checkmate bishop to h3 so mate and four and a lot of the times this wouldn't be a mate because there is no bishop that coming uh and here bishop gives uh the lethal uh, blow and and black wins the game so number 22 now okay i think we can start going for uh real games okay so let's start with this one 
Carlson Karakin, a real game. Karakin makes a mistake. And now Carlson had a mate in two. Can you believe? Right, so you to play and make the same move as uh, the world champion Magnus Carlson himself. All of you new new players that came, uh, we would appreciate a lot if you if you would give us a like on this video. That means that what I do matters, and uh, I'm doing this well, and you're enjoying that. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for all the compliments. You're an audience that everyone is envy to work with. You're very active, and you're helping me um, a lot. So there is a, a question: How to get a certain rating on, in, in Blitz? And here is my, my take on, on, on the Blitz rating in general. If you want to get good at Blitz, play classical time control or slow time control. I believe that a player who is good at slow chess will always be better at Blitz. However, we sometimes tend to see uh, players that are really good in Blitz and also feeder rated, like they could be Blitz 2600, but in classical they're 2400. It's very rare that you will see a player who's like 2600 in classical chess and that would he would be like 2400 in blitz. Like that almost doesn't happen. Imagine you're trying to uh, apply new concepts and all that and you're playing blitz. Blitz is just a game of intuition. You're using what you already know. It's instincts, right? And it's classical chess where you you can uh we can you really see the mistakes you make and uh in, it, it, because you don't understand something. In Blitz, if I analyze students' game, you could always say, I was in time pressure. And in classical chess, if you spend five minutes on a move and you make a blunder, that is strategic blunder, I know you don't understand that. And in Blitz, even if you make a mistake, that might not be the case. You were low on time, you were going aggressive and all that. So if you wanna good, get good at Blitz, play uh, slow chess and analyze. That's my personal take on it. So there are a lot of people that saw the move that Carlson made. Uh, Iron Math, you're also right. It's queen to h6, right? So what kind of patterns follow that, that afterwards? So Karakin might have missed queen h6 if king to h6, we have rook h8, right? And the king is boxed in. And if pawn takes, we have that I believe so-called ladder checkmate. So rook f7. And Carlson won uh, against Karakin. I think Karakin didn't let him checkmate him, though. He resigned after queen h6. Okay, next that comes from uh, real games. Mm, uh, this one is Rustam Kasimjanov, a very famous player. Um, a coach of Karanas, I believe, or the second at the least. And he was playing versus the greatest woman chess player of all time, Judith Polgar. And Kasimjanov has a mate now. Mate that he can reach by force. So why to play? How to reach a checkmate by force. Haha. <laughs> there are people that are saying uh, they saw that Queen H6 sack uh, live when it actually happened in a real tournament. Very nice. I also actually watched it live. So someone is asking an interesting question. They're asking how to build confidence in chess and how to overcome fear. And this is one of the ways how I like to explain this. Uh, and one of the tips uh, out of many tips that I can give to my students. You cannot change the fact that you, you will lose games. So if I make you a better chess player, it won't change the fact that you're going to keep on losing the games, right? If you're GM, you're going to be playing other G GMs and you're going to be losing still games. So it's always around 50% win, 50% loss. 